Why do you want to start a new master swim team? There's a lot of good reasons for it. Maybe related to why you became a coach in the first place. Might be other environmental factors in the neighborhood you live in. And I'd like to share with you some ideas about how to approach this. Let's start by considering what you already have. I was pretty raw when I started. In fact, my coaching career probably emerged from me being one of the least talented athletes on our team. I was surrounded by all these amazingly gifted kids who could just slide through the water like fish, where I was the dork that always got picked last in gym class at school. I knew early on I wasn't going to succeed based on genetics, so I probably paid more attention to the coach than most of the kids did. I didn't think much about that at the time, but some of what I learned must have sunk in. Later, when I was in my mid-20s, I joined a team that had a horrible coach. He was a retired hockey player with a sour personality who couldn't swim a stroke, but I guess they figured, hey, he's an athlete, so he'll figure it out, right? Well, when I told him I wanted to break a minute in the 100 fly that year, he said, <laughs> dude, like, it, it's impossible for anybody to go that fast, man. Yikes. I went to the facility manager and suggested they start looking for somebody else. Well, they didn't have anybody, so they asked me to give it a shot. So four decades and multiple master's programs later, I'm eternally grateful to that grumpy skater for putting me on this path. And I'm especially thankful for all the wonderful coaches I had as a kid and to all the U.S. Master Swimming staff and coaches who've shared their expertise with me over the decades. So my number one piece of advice is to take advantage of the resources you have. We'll be covering accessible resources, but I also urge you to look at your own skill set and personality and seek a situation that matches what you're bringing to the table and never stop building that skill set. More about those other resources in a minute. Let's start by discussing the most common types of master swimming programs. There are standalone clubs, which can be either nonprofit or for profit. There's USA Swimming age group programs with an affiliated master swim club. And then there are facility owned and managed clubs. Each approach has its advantages. Every situation is different and the financial considerations as well as the autonomy you have as a coach vary wildly. In general, I'd say the easiest entry point is to work for a facility managed program. For example, you might find a rec center or gym that has open pool hours you convince them to hire you to coach a master's program. The upside is that they handle advertising, scheduling, collecting fees, hiring lifeguards and whatnot, so all you have to do is coach the workouts. The downsides probably include low pay, promoting their brand rather than your own, and your potential lack of control over the workout schedule. Look for a good match. I tried one facility whose manager told me I wasn't allowed to promote a competitive spirit and that trying to get people to go fast was absolutely forbidden. Well, that wasn't gonna work for me, so I moved on. I ended up starting a team with a tax-supported recreation district who gave me free reign to establish and run the program how I wanted to, and that was wonderful. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want. You could negotiate for pay based on attendance and then do your own promotions to build your team up and get lots of members. Or you could work with the swimmers themselves to do fundraisers to supplement your revenue. This is an area where talking to other coaches with successful programs will give you a lot of good ideas. Working with an existing USA Swimming age group team may involve some of the same considerations. You might report to a board of directors made up of parents, for example, and you'll be subject to their systems and scheduling. But the advantage is they'll handle much of the infrastructure for you and you can take advantage of an existing brand that will likely feed you new members as the kids become adults. A standalone club has the potential to deliver a lot more compensation, satisfaction, and autonomy. On the other hand, it involves a lot of paperwork and a business infrastructure, which means you'll need to decide how much of the work and revenue you want to share with other people in the organization you create. If you meet specific IRS criteria, you may be able to set up as a tax-exempt nonprofit corporation. This structure requires the club to meet specific qualification requirements, including creation of bylaws and election of officers and so on. 
The USMS documents listed in the attached PowerPoint presentation include a good list of elements to consider. If you choose to create your program as a workout group under an established USMS club, you'll have the advantage of an existing infrastructure that can take care of getting your program registered and listed on the USMS club finder. You'll also have built-in teammates you can join for competitions, including relay participants. But you'll still need to find pool times and space, a way to collect swimmer dues, and ways to communicate with your athletes. Regardless of the program structure you choose, you may also need to hire support staff and other coaches. And then there's safety, which includes lifeguards, safety equipment, and the necessity to always keep an eye on the pool. If everyone in your program is a USMS member, including the person monitoring the practice on deck, you should be covered by the USMS liability insurance. But please do a thorough investigation to ensure you have all the coverage and procedures you'll need to deal with any emergencies that might occur. There's a lot that goes into building your own program. And if you want to make a living solely from coaching, it'll require a major time commitment, a well-developed set of plans, time and people management skills, and a relentless focus on bringing your dreams to life. But don't let that discourage you. It is hard work, but you can do it. And your USMS colleagues have a huge knowledge base you can tap into by networking with other coaches and USMS staff. But if you're more like me and you're content to work a day job to support your passion for coaching, you can have a long and fulfilling career as a master's coach without needing to invest quite so much in the process. My first coaching job happened because I didn't want myself and my teammates to suffer under bad coaching. But it didn't take long for me to realize that I'd found something that was deeply rewarding. Whenever anyone asked, so Terry, what do you do? I'd proudly say, I'm a master swim coach, even though the bulk of my income came from my job in aerospace. You probably think I said that just to impress women, and it does work for that. But it truly was how I came to define myself. For me, there's nothing quite like the feeling I get when an athlete thanks me for helping them achieve a goal. And that brings me to my final point, the real key to success in setting up a master swimming program. One of the things that impresses me about people who achieve success as master's coaches is their passion for the sport and for helping people. They always talk about their swimmers, not about themselves. They talk about when their athletes broke through barriers, learned new techniques, and accomplished things they didn't think were possible. It's no coincidence that the coaches with that athlete-centric attitude are the ones who build the largest teams, have the best relationships with their pool managers, and not surprisingly, make the most money. It goes beyond just showing up to coach your workout. You need to ensure that what you do benefits your clients as well as your partners in the facility and within the community. Get out there and become a champion for our sport. I've found more new team members by just talking to people than through any amount of advertising or website promotion. I seek out places where potential swimmers hang out and let them know how welcome they'd be if they came to practice. I love to ask people about their experiences in swimming and I'm always happy to answer technique or strategy questions. Yeah, sure, I've, I've gotten weird stares when people see me demonstrating a freestyle catch in the middle of a crowded restaurant, but I can't help myself. And when someone tells me they joined because they heard our group was more fun than their previous team, well, that makes my day. If you keep your swimmers happy, they'll help you spread the word and recruit new members. The USMS website has documents that go into deeper detail than what I've covered here. You can download the associated PowerPoint presentation that contains the locations of these resources. And I hope you'll continue to network with your LMSC coaches chair these brilliant people here on the USMS Coaches Committee and the Coach and Club resources available through the USMS Central Office. Talk to other coaches whenever you attend swim meets and keep up to date with the articles in Swimmer Magazine and in the USMS Streamlines online content. Watch for more of these webinars and consider attending USMS networking and national events in person if you can. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to hearing more of your stories of success in your master's coaching career. Go out there and have fun.